Alright guys, how's it going? Welcome back. I hope you all had a good bank holiday weekend. Today I'm going to do a Q&A video, which I thought would keep you entertained. Let's get started then. Right, first up then, from John G 7304 Where is your bingo carpet hoodie? We miss it. Now, sadly, I know exactly <laughs> I know exactly what you're referring to there. That hoodie is a Tommy Hilfiger hoodie, and I quite like the Tommy Hilfiger brand. It's my favourite go-to brand. And that was a gift from a friend of mine. Now, he might be watching this, so I need to be careful what I say. I have a sneaky suspicion that he was bought that and didn't really like it, so gave it to me. It's a bit loud. I wore it in a video, and all the comments on the video were regarding the hoodie, not the car I was in, which was a Mini Cooper SD, if you want to go back and watch it. It's sort of got the TH logo everywhere, and in fairness, it does look like the carpet at a uh, Mecca Bingo. So, I still have it, I just don't wear it very often. In fact, John, send me your address and you can have it. Right, next question. Reese Crofton. Hi Matt, what's the best, best car and worst car you've ever driven and purchased? We also love the channel. Cheers, Reese. Um, this is tough because I've driven loads of nice cars, and then also loads of terrible, awful cars. Hmm. I don't know really. The first thing that springs to mind is something like the the brand new Bentley Bentayga that I borrowed last summer. Um, Bentley Manchester called me and lent me a Bentayga for a couple of days. So that was really nice. The worst, it probably isn't a specific brand, but quite often I pick up cars or we get cars in part exchange that just haven't been looked after the complete, you know, scruffy pigsties. Probably, you know, one of those. It's not like I say, it's not a specific brand that, you know, jumps out at me but just something that someone's neglected. For example, actually, I just had a thought. Recently, about, well, about three months ago, I did a video, a look what I've bought cheap dot 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 type video with a Vauxhall Antara, and it was, it was disgusting. It was the dirtiest car I think I've ever bought. So probably that, probably that. Next one, TJC. Hi Matt, the channel is getting better and better. Well, thank you very much. My question is, would you get a storage unit to keep all these lovely old Jags and Range Rovers to be enjoyed in the future? Also, when are you making a trip across the Irish Sea for a road trip? You know, I've never been to Ireland, which is something I'm quite embarrassed about. So this year, I promise, I will go to Ireland and do some sort of road trip there. Would be quite good fun, I think. Regarding the storage unit, it's something I've often, I've often toyed with. I think I said in one of, my, one of my videos, I think it was with the Green 330 convertible, I mentioned that I'd like to buy a, an aircraft hangar type thing and just fill it full of 90s and early 2000s cars. I would like to do that. But I think in reality, what I'd, my dream actually, I was discussing this with a friend of mine a few months ago, would be to buy a small farm, not a working farm, because I don't want to get involved in the daily chores, some sort of small hole in there with lots of outbuildings. Then I can have animals, all that sort of stuff, but also have a barn there so I can fill it full of, I don't know, a dozen or so 90s and 2000s cars. That's my, uh, that's my goal in life, I think, really. Before I answer any more questions, I just need to say a big thank you to today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Car Vertical. Now, before you hand over any cash for a used car or motorcycle, it's really important that you check its history. And with Car Vertical, that couldn't be easier. All you need to do is go to carvertical.com and then type in the reg or the VIN. So let me give you an example. Do you remember the VW Scirocco that featured on the Transformation channel? Let me show you that. So we know the reg was KU15WFK. Check vehicle. Now obviously we know the Scirocco is a Cat S, but you'd never know to look at it now because they've done a great job with it. So this is why it's really important to do one of these checks. If you saw that car advertised quite cheaply and you went to go and look at it, you wouldn't necessarily know that it, well, that it looked a state. And what's good about Car Vertical is that it checks databases in dozens of countries, I think 35 to be exact, and it checks hundreds of millions of cars. So this will tell us whether it's ever been stolen, written off, had a mileage rollback, or has outstanding finance on it. Sometimes if it has been involved in an accident, it even shows you the photographs of the damage. Right, and the report is ready then, so let's view this report. So that is indeed a VW Scirocco diesel. It's never had a mileage rollback. There's no outstanding finance, but we've got an amber warning here for damage. So if we scroll down there, it's never been stolen. The last known mileage was 85, because it shows all the MOT history as well. We've got a minor warning there for a, I guess someone's entered the wrong miles in at the last MOT, or one of the last MOTs. Right, so when we go down to damage, we've got an amber warning there, this vehicle was damaged. This vehicle was marked as an insurance write-off. It tells us that in January 2023, it was registered as a Category S write-off. Repairable, but structural damage. That's why it's really important to do these checks before you buy a car. And if you'd like to save yourself 20% off each and every check that you do, don't forget to use my promo code, HIGHPEAK. That's HIGHPEAK, all one word, 
or alternatively, click the link below in the video description. So thanks Sky Vertical for sponsoring today's video. Right, on to the next question. George Horrocks has said, what do you think of the 1.4 litre TSI DSG in a 2018 Skoda Superb estate? Worth spending £15,000 on one. Well, George, what car are you thinking of getting? Because that's awfully specific, isn't it? Um, the Skoda Superb estate is a really good car, actually. I don't know if I'd buy it with a 1.4 petrol, though. It's better with a 2 litre diesel. It's also better as a manual, not a DSG. That probably answers your question, doesn't it? They are really good cars. I just think it's a little bit... The 1.4 is a bit underpowered for such a big, heavy car. Mm. Depends, depends how many miles you're going to do in it, really, I suppose. I'd still go for a diesel manual. That's something you never thought you'd hear me say, isn't it? Some Blokes 2022 has asked, thoughts on the new Range Rover? Um, I assume you mean the full-size one. The L460, I think it's called. It's the same with the new Sport. I'm not, I'm not convinced. I don't really like the styling. Every time I see one, it gets my attention because it's the newest Range Rover and I'm a big Range Rover fan. But I don't really like the styling. They look too bloated. I prefer my L405. I think, I think the facelift L405 was the best Range Rover, to be honest. The new one, I'll eventually get one, I suppose, in three or five years' time when mine's on its last legs, I suppose. Um, but yeah, no, it'll be a, a reluctant thing, that. Southwestern in 1986 had asked, has there ever been a time when you've been worried for your car business as cars weren't selling? All the time, all the time. March in particular has been oof, quite a quiet month, but then you can't, you can't take it day by day or week by week. You've got to work it out over the year. And over the year, it's always all right. February, for example, was one of the best months in business I've ever had, which is always typically a quiet month. And yet March, which is normally a busy month because of new regs, has been quite poor. So it's a weird job. I remember when I was at my last site in New Mills, um, I, had a, I had a period in February, I think, of, well, the phone didn't ring for about two weeks. And I was climbing the walls. It was my only source of income back then, and I just had no money, and it was a, it was a difficult time. So, yeah, it, it happens all the time, sadly. Solid Snake has asked, if you could pick a 1980s classic car, what would it be? Straight away, I'm thinking Mercedes SL. But that's a little bit boring and predictable, isn't it? What about a DeLorean? I think in reality, it would look quite cool. I'd have this in my barn or my hangar or something, a DeLorean. But I think the reality would, wouldn't be as good. It's got a Renault engine, a Renault petrol V6 or something. I think a Renault gearbox as well. So it'll be an old three or four speed. I can't imagine it being great. But it's not something you're going to use every day, is it? So yeah, we'll go with a, uh, a DMC. Here's a good question, actually. Uh, TC Audio Books said, Hello, Matt. Merry Easter. Question. If you got back into the acting game and you were cast as the lead in a cool spy or private eye action thriller and the producers tell you that you can choose any two cars for your character, what would you go for? That's a really good question, actually, isn't it? Right, I think I've chosen two good ones. I would choose a brand new Defender 110 in black with the... Um, with the adventure pack on it, with that little lunchbox on the side, like they have in the new series of The Hunted. They look really cool. So one of those, that would be my off-road sort of go-anywhere thing. Hmm. This needs to be made, doesn't it, this? The second car I would choose would be something like a Jaguar F-Type, an F-Type R or an F-Type SVR, all-wheel drive. Yeah, that's a good idea, actually. Good question. Okay, next one. Do you really dislike rovers, or are you just jumping on the naysayer bandwagon? No, I detest them with every fibre of my being. Dave Bromwich, happy Easter, Matt, and thanks for all the great content. Cheers, Dave. My question, would you buy a Volvo V70 or an XC70, and what's your reasoning behind it? Both are very good, actually, Dave. So, I wouldn't be too fussed. Whichever one you end up with, I think you'll like. If they were side by side, though, at the same sort of price, I think I'd go with the XC just because it's a little bit higher up, looks a little bit cooler with its flared arches, and of course it's all-wheel drive. So, but yeah, I wouldn't be dissatisfied with a V70 either, so either or. JBMN T. it's like a scrabble board, isn't it? Do you think it's a good idea to get into the used car business today? Yes. I think it's difficult, but then it was difficult eight years ago when I started. It's always difficult. Every time you try and do something that someone's done for a while, Somebody that's done it for a while will always say, oh, the job's, you know, the job's, well, I can't say what they would say, the job's messed. You'd be better off doing it 20 years ago and all that sort of stuff. You get it in every industry. And that's what I got eight years ago from anybody that I told I was setting up. Um, but no, it's still a good way of making money, basically. Yeah, so no, do it. 
Next question then. Are you excited for our first car show? Petrol. AJ Good. Why have you just sent me a question? Yes, I suppose I am. I am. He's referring to, of course, the Petrol Hedonism Underground event, which is on the 13th and 14th of April at Wembley. So come and say hello. Right, next question. Very smooth, that, Andrew, by the way. Very smooth. Next one, Grime. I can't pronounce that. Will the High Peak Property Channel be getting any further content? Possibly. Possibly. I set up probably, I don't know, two years ago now, a High Peak Properties channel, which was doing quite well. We were doing one video a month with it. We were just documenting my sort of before and after process with various rental properties that I had on the go at the time. But I was kind of aware that I think it grew to like 33,000 subscribers and it was doing all right in terms of views every month. It was growing steadily. But I was just aware that it looked a little bit, a little bit braggy, which I don't like. And I felt as though I was telling people a bit too much. Do you know what I mean? This is kind of the problem with social media. I was putting a bit too much information out there, I felt. So for the last year or so, I just haven't, haven't bothered uh, filming anything for that channel. I just felt like it was a little bit, a little bit too close, really. That's, that's my main reason. Well, they're, they're the two main reasons, I suppose. And of course, there is a third reason, which is probably the most important. You can only buy one house every, well, buying a house takes three months or something. So it isn't like buying a car where I can buy eight in a morning. Do you know what I mean? It's a much slower process. So the whole thing was slower. So uh, yeah, no, I don't know. It's something that I could fall back onto, I suppose, if, if I wanted to, but I'm not sure. David Marshall has said, hi Matt, question. There must be times dealing with the general public that you think, why am I doing this? Do you think one day you'll just walk away from selling cars and dealing with idiots? To be fair, they're not, they're not all idiots. You, just, you, you do get some difficult customers occasionally, but then you do in every, in every job and every industry. Um, but yeah, one day, I, I never intended to do this long term anyway. I did it as a stopgap eight years ago and I've just kind of stuck with it. And I've got no regrets, but I still don't want to be doing it in, well, I don't want to be doing it in 10 years time. I don't really want to be doing it in five years time, but we'll see. So no, it isn't, a, it isn't a long term thing for me, this. Having said that, I can't ever imagine my life without cars. I will always have some involvement, but I don't necessarily want a forecourt and a garage. It's, it's a lot of work. Admiral's Walk has asked, well, he said, all right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back. That's a familiar start to your videos. Do you remember your first video? You must have said just that. All right, guys, how's it going? I don't think I did, you know. I think if you go back to my first half a dozen videos, I didn't really have an intro. I didn't ever announce my name or say hello. I was quite sort of solemn and grumpy and... Hello again. Right, so today I just wanted to share with you my latest purchase. God knows why it took off, really. I don't know. But no, that wasn't really... It wasn't an intentional introduction or catchphrase. It just kind of happened. Thinking about it, about a year ago, I did a video of me watching back my very first video. So maybe go back and, uh, and watch that because I, I critiqued it. Next one then, Anthony White. Hi Matt, will High Peak Autos ever move from your current location to somewhere bigger and maybe somewhere newer or will you refurbish and renovate the current site you're on? That's a good point actually. In the next couple of months I'm about to renew my lease on my current place so it's going to get an overhaul. It's going to get fresh branding, a lick of paint, it's going to be reclad, it's going to look much nicer. I'm going to paint all the railings, I'm going to completely transform it because I'm quite embarrassed about it. It looks, looks a mess. And because I'm busy all the time, it just gets neglected, but it shouldn't because that's my, well, it's me. People drive up there to, to, to see me and see my cars and all that sort of stuff. So it should look far nicer than it does. So yes, in the very near future, it will be renovated. I'm not gonna move because ugh, I can't be bothered to be honest. It's quite difficult to find a good location as well. And that does everything I need. I don't really need anything bigger. I'd just be more stressed. Rob James, hi Matt, have you ever done any investing in stock trading? No, I wouldn't know where to start. Stick with cars and houses. That's what I know a little bit about. Kamal has asked, Hi Matt, why do you dislike the Lexus IS 200T? I think it's a great alternative to the BMW 330i and more reliable and a bit more than the 300h to drive. I don't dislike it. I don't know why you think I do. I dislike the previous IS diesel because it's very unreliable. But no, I like, I like all ISs, particularly the, um, the non-hybrid ones. I've never actually had one of those. I've only had the hybrids, but I imagine... Yeah, they do, the, um, they do the RC200T as well, don't they? And they do a NX200T. So yeah, I imagine they're all right. Two litre turbo, they will be more reliable than the BM, 100%. You can't beat Lexus for reliability or customer service, by the way. 
Uh, right, next one. Core. What would you rather get in a trade-in if you were to keep? That's a weird question. A BMW 520i E39 or an Audi A6 C5 1.9 TDI? Um, the BM but I wouldn't want the 520i. It'd have to be a, a six cylinder. Well, it, that is a six cylinder actually, isn't it? The 520. It's an old 2.2, I think. But no, if it was a, you'd want a 530 really, or a 540. But yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have the Audi. I'd rather have the, uh, the BM. Tony Pedersen has said, will you do an MTV crib style video of your house? Uh, it'd be nice to see your life away from work. Mm, no, I'm quite, <sighs> This sounds a bit weird now because I'm, I'm on social media, but I am quite a private person. I only ever post something on social media if I want it to be seen. Do you know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not one of these people that just randomly post stuff. I do everything for a reason. And in fact, my colleagues here had to push me to do that car tour at my own house because I thought it was a bit, I just thought it was a bit braggy and a bit, I'm not a show off and it just felt like, a, like I was showing off. I didn't, didn't really like it, but it was quite, it was well received. Um, I'm proud of myself, but I just, you know, anyway. Right, next question. Um, Haz has said, looking for a second car. Current car is a Leon Cupra, which I'll be keeping. It needs to be a big family car. Comfortable cruiser for long distances, petrol, low tax, and insurance groups. Reliable and plenty of boot space. Doesn't need to be an SUV. Uh, budget of 5K, that's a tough one. Hmm, that is a tough one, really. Unfortunately, Haz, I don't think you're going to be very happy with my answer here, because... If you're looking for petrol, it won't be low tax. It just won't be. Um, reliable, plenty of boot space. This might sound a bit boring, but something like a petrol Focus, that'd be all right. Or a Mazda 3. Oh, hang on, no, that doesn't work, does it? It needs to be a big family car. Mazda 6, Mazda 6 Estate. They're all right if you go for the petrol, not a diesel. The diesels are terrible. Um, or a Skoda Superb Estate. Or a Skoda Octavia Estate. Maybe one of those, but I think for 5K, you might... You might just end up with a bit of a headache. This might sound a bit dull, but something like a Zafira, they're not bad. The petrols are all right, really. I don't know. I don't, you're not going to get anything that um, makes you really excited, are you? Really. But yeah, there's plenty of choice, I suppose. Something like a Zafira wouldn't be bad. Super Morris has said, you clearly love what you do. Would you look to get a car showroom that would cater for more high-end cars? Bentleys, Rolls Royces, Ferraris. The kind of place where you'd wear a suit and tie. No, definitely not. That worries me to death. I know my market with my bread and butter cars and my ordinary family hatchbacks with occasionally something nice thrown in, just for my own interest. But no, definitely not. Would I'd love to say, oh yeah, do you know that garage with all the Bentleys in? That's mine. But there'd be no other reason apart from that. So, no. Don't want to be braggy. I don't want to be braggy. I'd love to say yeah, that. No, yeah, yeah. Bentleys. Tony Dooley, hi Matt. As your businesses grow, have you looked at expanding your team's responsibilities? Balancing work and life is not easy. Um, I'm, I'm happier now than I have been for the last couple of years because I've got uh, a, a better team around me, really. So, yes, as to whether I need to, I don't need to expand it anymore right now, I don't think. Next one then, Henhouse Harry has said, you've got 10K to buy a future classic. What do you pick? You know what I fancy, actually? A BMW E30 convertible, like a, an early 90s, well, no, late 80s. That'd be quite cool, wouldn't it? Something like a 3 to 8 convertible, I think they they're really timeless. I saw a couple while I was in Bermuda, actually, and they just look cool, especially there with that backdrop. Yeah, so something like that. Mika has said, hi Matt, what's your opinion on importing cars from Japan? Um, I've never done it. I know a few people who do, and it's quite interesting, actually, because you get cars that we don't get here. So I know a few people that have imported um, Lexus IS 300s, for example. Oh, no, Lexus IS 350s, and we never got the 350 here. So there are loads of cars there available that we never got. So... It could be quite a good idea, that, couldn't it? I've never done it, though. There are other advantages as well, because, for example, I believe in Japan they don't salt the roads, or they don't use salt, so the cars over there are less rusty. There's a place, I think it's up in York, who bring in old Range Rovers, which is how I found them, um, and they're all Japanese imports. So they bring in Range Rover Classics and P38s. They're all Japanese imports. The only thing that worries me with that is, quite often with Japanese import cars, the mileage is always suspiciously low and there's no service history. So I always kind of worry that they might have been whizzed or clocked or something. Who'd know? When you speak to somebody about it, they always say, well, they don't do many miles in Japan, do they? Well, how do you know that they don't do? What a stupid thing to say. They don't, they don't, they don't do many miles in Japan. What does that even mean? Anyway, right. JCPX2500. Hi, Matt. Will you ever review a current Gen Ford Mustang? I'd love to, actually. 
Yeah, I haven't done yet, but I would love to. Peter K, I don't think it's the Peter K, but it might be. Uh, looking to buy a used 4x4 for frequent trips around Europe. Needs to be okay on fuel, have a turn of speed when needed, reliable, budget of 18K, help. Right, what you need then is a, I forget the numbers, but a X5, the newer shape from 2015 or 16 onwards. They're really good cars. You'll get one for that sort of money. The 3 litre diesel is excellent, it's quick, it's frugal, and they're quite reliable if looked after. I'd have one, genuinely. So one of those, or Porsche Cayenne, three litre diesel. Again, same reasons as the X5. Hi Matt, any thoughts on the Maserati Ghibli? I know, I was thinking that. My, my brother really wants one to replace his, uh, his Evoque with a Ghibli, so I thought that was him again, but it's not. That was from Logan Mitchell. I need to get one on the channel because the great value, which is why my brother's ears have pricked up when I, uh, when I showed them to him. You can pick them up for about 12 grand and it is an awful lot of car for the money. I did a review with a, a diesel Quattroporte and I loved it. That was about 18 months ago or so, so maybe go back and watch that video. The build quality isn't the best, but they're just cool and quite economical as well. So if the Ghibli is anything like that, then I think you're onto a bit of a winner really. Right, next question then. Three people have asked this question. What role did you audition for in Emmerdale? This was, this was a long time ago now. It's probably, I think it was nine, nine or 10 years ago. I auditioned for the role of Robert Sugden. That's right, isn't it? Robert, you don't watch it, do you? Robert Sugden. That's the role that I auditioned for. And according to my agent, got down to like the last six or something and then didn't get the role. And I was gutted at the time. It was before High Peak Autos and that was my biggest sort of, biggest chance that I didn't get. But I'm not that bothered, to be honest. I'm doing all right as I am. I don't, I genuinely don't know if I'd have, I don't know if I would have enjoyed it, to be honest. I think I was a little bit too young. I was only 23 or 24 or something. The guy that got the job in the end was probably 27 or 28 at the time, so a little bit older. So perhaps it wasn't anything to do with me. I think it might have just been my age, perhaps. Tom4445, is it realistic to be able to buy and sell as a weekend pastime for profit? Yeah, why not? It's how I started. I mean, I was doing it while I was at college, living in Spain, which was quite tough there because the rules there are very strict. And yeah, that's exactly how I started. So definitely don't be too, I don't know, don't be too greedy, I guess. You might only earn three or 400 pounds or something per car, but still. It's a nice little pickup, isn't it? Just an idea, this isn't a question, uh, Aegea. After you buy a car and then get it ready for sale, maybe in the next video you can say if you sold it, just for our closure purposes. I would like to do this. It would be really nice if I could stagger the videos a little bit, build up a bank of videos so that I'm not always on the last minute, and then at the end of it, a bit like wheelie dealers say, right, the car sold for this, that was my profit. Sometimes it works out like that, but most of the time it doesn't. Um, because I do three videos a week, it's quite a lot of work. Fast as Fox, I have to be careful how I said that, uh, I subscribed nearly five years ago and you had 10,000 subs at the time. Now you're fast on the way to 400K. So the past five years have been great to you. Where do you see yourself in another five years? I don't know, that's a good question. I hate questions like that, to be honest, no offense. It's like when you're at a job interview. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? It's a funny question, isn't it, that? I don't know. We'll see. I think I'm on the right path, I'm on the right road. In terms of the YouTube channel within the next five years, I should be at a million, I guess, I hope. If not more, maybe, I don't know, who knows. And I would like to do more fun challenges, road trips, that sort of thing, just for my own entertainment, I suppose, for my own fun. Mickey French 65 what do you think about the BYD EVs from China? Now, I've seen quite a few of these recently. BYD, it used to be called Build Your Dreams or something, something cringy like that, but now I think they've just shortened that to BYD. Bring your own beer or whatever it stands for. But they're quite good looking cars. I saw one last night in town actually, which caught my eye. I didn't even know what it was. And then I, at the last minute I saw that it was BYD. Um, I'm sure they're all right, I don't know. At the local Mercedes dealer in Stockport, they, they have a BYD franchise attached to it. So I should go down there and just have a, have a scope. Okay, then Daydreamer has said, has there been any new plans with the Blingo from a couple of videos ago? Or have you started to prepare it in any way for the Rust to Rome challenge? Yes. So there's going to be a, a full video with that probably next week, next week. Hopefully. Yeah, next week, hopefully. It's currently with the lads at Transformation. It's having a cam belt because the last one, they sent me a picture of it and it was, it could have snapped at any point. So it's had a new cam belt, water pump, auxiliary belt, uh, tensioner pulley, all sorts of stuff. A full service, a clutch. I didn't have to do the clutch. I did the nut? Right. Oh yeah, he told me this. Uh, just altered it. 
Yeah, they, right, they've adjusted the clutch. They didn't need a new clutch. Um, so yeah, I'm massively overspending on my old Berlingo. So there will be a video with that. I haven't actually seen it yet either. I've purposely not wanted to ruin the surprise. I've seen it, well, I've seen pictures of it. I saw the video when I was uh, away in Bermuda last week, but I haven't seen it in person. So I'm keen to drive it for the first time and, uh, and see what it's like. Well, I think that's about it then. I hope that answered all your questions and I hope that kept you entertained on this Easter Monday. Hope you all had a good weekend. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. <laughs>